Once upon a time, the way to get a computer to do something useful was to feed it a stack of cards with holes punched into them. Thankfully, things soon moved on and, by the end of the 20th century, you could get a computer to do things simply by pointing and clicking with a keyboard and a mouse. But the real revolution in making computers easy to use has happened only in the last decade or so, with the arrival of touch-sensitive screens. Most smartphones, e-book readers, and some MP3 players already work with simple, touch controls, and some laptops work that way too. Touch screens are intuitively easy to use, but how exactly do they work? If you are new here, then you might first want to subscribe to this channel and press the bell icon so you don't miss our regular documentaries. Every week we publish two to three such information based videos. A touch screen is a bit like an invisible keyboard glued to the front of your computer monitor. To understand how it works, it helps if you know something about how an ordinary keyboard works first. Essentially, every key on a keyboard is an electrical switch. When you push a key down, you complete an electric circuit and a current flows. The current varies according to the key you press and that's how your computer figures out what you're typing. Touch screens have to achieve something similar to this on the surface on your computer screen. Obviously they can't use switches, membranes, and bits of plastic or they'd block the view of the screen below. So they have to use more cunning tricks for sensing your touch, completely invisibly. Different kinds of touch screen work in different ways. Some can sense only one finger at a time and get extremely confused if you try to press in two places at once. Others can easily detect and distinguish more than one key press at once. These are some of the main technologies. Resistive touch screens are currently the most popular technology, that work a bit like transparent keyboards overlaid on top of the screen. There's a flexible upper layer of conducting polyester plastic bonded to a rigid lower layer of conducting glass and separated by an insulating membrane. When you press on the screen, you force the polyester to touch the glass and complete a circuit, just like pressing the key on a keyboard. A chip inside the screen figures out the coordinates of the place you touched. Capacitive screens are made from multiple layers of glass. The inner layer conducts electricity and so does the outer layer, so effectively the screen behaves like two electrical conductors separated by an insulator, in other words, a capacitor. When you bring your finger up to the screen, you alter the electrical field by a certain amount that varies according to where your hand is. Capacitive screens can be touched in more than one place at once. Unlike most other types of touch screen, they don't work if you touch them with a plastic stylus, because plastic is an insulator and stops your hand from affecting the electric field. Just like the magic eye beams in an intruder alarm, an infrared touch screen uses a grid pattern of LEDs and light detector photocells arranged on opposite sides of the screen. The LEDs shine infrared light in front of the screen, a bit like an invisible spider's web. If you touch the screen at a certain point, you interrupt two or more beams. A microchip inside the screen can calculate where you touched by seeing which beams you interrupted. The touch screen on Sony Reader Ebooks, like the one pictured in our photo below, works this way. Since you're interrupting a beam, infrared screens work just as well whether you use your finger or a stylus. Surface Acoustic Wave Surprisingly, this touch screen technology detects your fingers using sound instead of light. Ultrasonic sound waves, too high pitched for humans to hear, are generated at the edges of the screen and reflected back and forth across its surface. When you touch the screen, you interrupt the sound beams and absorb some of their energy. The screen's microchip controller figures out from this where exactly you touched the screen. Have you noticed how an old style radio can buzz and whistle if you move your hand toward it? That's because your body affects the electromagnetic field that incoming radio waves create in and around the antenna. The closer you get, the more effect you have. Near-field imaging touch screens work a similar way. 
As you move your finger up close, you change the electric field on the glass screen, which instantly registers your touch. Much more robust than some of the other technologies, NFI screens are suitable for rough and tough environments. Unlike most of the other technologies, they can also detect touches from pens, styluses, or hands wearing gloves. Light pens were an early form of touchscreen technology, but they worked in a completely different way to modern touchscreens. In old-style computer screens, the picture was drawn by an electron beam that scanned back and forth, just like in a cathode ray tube television. The pen contained a photoelectric cell that detected the electron beam as it passed by, sending a signal to the computer down a cable. Since the computer knew exactly where the electron beam was at any moment, it could figure out where the pen was pointing. Light pens could be used either to select menu items or text from the screen or, as shown in the picture here, to draw computer graphics. Hope you found information in this video useful? If yes, then hit the like button below and share this video with your friends. Also subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon, so you don't miss our daily videos. Thank you.